Oh dear, hay fever time. It's sun. It's spring, everyone. <sighs> I'm walking back from uphill to the other end of Western Promenade. I'll probably go along the beach today. I haven't done this for a couple of years, actually, this particular walk. Um, and this is the River Axe, not to be confused with the River Parrot. So I think in one of my videos once I did refer to this as the River Parrot, and it's not, it's the River Axe. I did rectify the situation. Over there, look, you've got Bleed Nil. You've got St. Nicholas's Church up there. The old one, there's a newer one in Uphill. The beacon, which I wonder whether they lit. I never did go and find out if they lit that on the wedding was on. They might have done. Of course, when I look at these boats, these sloops and yachts and that, Reminds me of my Ocean Youth Club days. And I was about 17 in Plymouth. A long time ago. <laughs> God, yeah, 40 odd years ago that was. All part of the fun of growing up and having fun. Yeah, we might have had a sloop, probably a bit bigger than that one there. I reckon it was bigger than that. I can't remember exactly. I used to know all the dimensions years ago. It was called the Pelican and it was an Ocean Youth Club vessel. And they still have them today. I don't expect they, they might have. They might still have that one. It had a sister ship as well. I went to, a few years back, I went to the Festival of the Sea at Bristol and they had all the yachts, the big sa tall sailing ships. And um, oh, it was it was quite an eventful day, really. It was uh, very hot. There was lots of activities going on, lots of people singing and joviality and that sort of thing. This is where all the yachts here more. Of course, at Bur Burnham, they've modernised a bit of their marina there to encourage people to moor and come and visit. Because, as we know, you get uh, obviously two tides a day, and uh, you can't if you get trapped. You either can't get out or you can't get in. <laughs> so you've got to get your timing right. It looks to me as if it's still going out. My hay fever's really bad today. It was alright yesterday. What I found is if I if I take a tablet, it doesn't really work to the next day. Those hay fever pills. So the day I take it, it don't seem to do anything. I, mean, I didn't take one yesterday, but it worked from the one I had the day before. There's Brent Knoll in the distance. Mud, look. Like big chocolate icing. <sighs> yeah, I like to do this. I might have been, I might have done it a year ago. It feels more like two or even three years ago that I've done this particular walk. <sighs> I think I cut through, I've done the cut through once over there. There's Brain Down of course. I'm always talking about my reference points. That's Brain Down, Crooks Peak, um, Brent Knoll and Glastonbury Tor. Those are my big references when I'm out and about. Oh I gotta walk the plank look everyone. Let's hope it's safe. Yeah, because you do get these big 
gashes in the ground that when the tide comes in it gushes all up here as well look. in fact sometimes there you can't even walk on here it'd be too boggy there's an awful lot of yachts You don't always get this number, mind. But a lot of them having what's called craned into the water. It's called craning in. Um, I learnt that from my yacht, yachting club days. Where as soon as the weather improves, people will take their yachts out of their front gardens. And have them craned in. And they, get, and they probably pay so much to, have, to be able to moor them here. Don't know, I expect they do, but there's a charge. And then they just leave them here and then come down at weekends. See that little boat there called Channel Pearl? Now that would be useful. As a little ferry boat to take people across to Uphill, um, to Brent, um, bring down, wouldn't it? Something like that. I mean, in fact, it might have been used like that in the past to ferry people across this river. It would be a quick way to get over, otherwise you've got to go all round land. Take you half an hour to um, drive round, hour or more to cycle. And uh, ten minutes if you went in a boat cross. But they stopped all that for some reason. Maybe the farmer didn't want it. Lots of people traipsing past his house. I mean, he, what he could have done is made some money out of it. Charged people a little toll fee. Or even ran the business himself. Right then, I've got to do a little bit of um, news update, haven't I? Which I sometimes do on my walks. Right, now apparently, they might be showing photographs of the dead um, bin liner. Benign, Bin Laden, who, um, the Al Qaeda bloke, who apparently the SEAL commandos of the American Marine US Navy shot him dead a couple of days ago when he was hiding in Pakistan. Um, it's all over the news today, all over the news. People, I mean, because the thing is, they've already buried him at sea. Uh, not the usual sort of burial for a Muslim, but they've already buried him at sea, giving him the Muslim rights, apparently. But, um, let's hope this is safe. But they, people want to see the body. Apparently, President Obama was able to watch the actual moment that the Marines broke into his encampment and shot him, including one of his wives. And there were a lot, over 20 people all together in, the, in his residence, which was only a stone's throw away from the Pakistan main military establishment. So, so there's a big thing about that. Why didn't they know? How was it that the Americans could just fly over in these big helicopters and bomb somewhere just up the road from this army base? All that sort of thing. So that's my bit of news during this walk. Omar bin Laden has been, or whatever his first name is, I can't remember it now, but the Twin Tower disaster designer. They reckon that he's now been killed. And they're rejoicing in America with flowers being laid at ground zero where the Twin Towers once stood. Of course, you've got all your alternative theories. That that's just propaganda, you know, that, that until there's proof that it was him, the actual body, no one, it, it, you know, no one, not everyone's going to believe it. That is actually him. Because he's been, he's eluded them for over 10 years, even though he's put out the odd tape recording. He's eluded them, apparently. But they've been building up this knowledge of his whereabouts for some time. 
I mean, if he's been there for four or five years, that seems odd as well. You think he would have moved, carried on moving about, wouldn't you? Must have let his guard down big time. Anyway, that's a bit of news.